Troopers, second squad. Hey everyone, this is the Neo Turbo Maniac here with a review of Shock Troopers Second Squad for the Neo Geo. Shock Troopers Second Squad was released back in 1998 and is a overhead on a gun. Hence the name, it is a sequel to Shock Troopers. Uh, in this game, the premise is that you have a corporation called DIC that wants to take over the government, but if they d don't give in, they'll unleash nuclear weapons. So it's up to you to put a stop to it. Second Squad. Alright, so the controls in this game are similar to Shock Troopers in that you have a button for an attack, you have a button to use your bomb, and you have a button to use an evasive maneuver. Uh, when you're attacking, you can also hold the attack button and move the joystick, that way your character can hold his fire within a certain direction. You'll also be able to enter vehicles in this game similar to what you see in Metal Slug. And the controls also fairly similar in that you have a button to attack, you have a button, you can hold down the attack button to unleash a more powerful shot, and you can also charge a vehicle towards the enemy. In addition, you can also collect various items that will boost your score. Alright, so in this game you have four characters to choose from. Each character has a specific weapon, which can be upgraded to a more powerful version of it, and they also have their own unique bomb attack. In addition, each character has varying degrees of speed, attack power, defense, and evasive maneuver. A one major omission in this game compared to the original Shock Troopers was the team battle mode, in which you were able to select three characters and swap them on the fly. In this game, you don't have that, so you, the character that you pick, you stick with that character. Uh, what I like about this game are the game's graphics. Uh, the graphics in this game compared to the original went with pre-rendered characters instead of traditional hand-drawn sprites. And so, uh, the characters are animated more fluently in this game compared to the original, and also the characters are bigger. And you'll also notice the stages in this game are, have a more urban setting compared to the, compared to the original. So you'll, you'll have more stages in cities as opposed to in mountains or in the jungles. Although you do have a mountain stage in this game. Uh, with the, uh, compared to the original, there is a lot more action on screen. There are more enemies and also increased firepower from the enemies. And because of that, you'll have some slowdown in this game. Now the slowdown can be annoying, but at times it can also help you out, especially when it, when it comes to fighting bosses. Uh, it will be easier for you to dodge their attacks. Uh, you know, I have a life bar in, like in the original, but this time you actually have three lives instead of one, but your life bar depletes much quicker. In addition to your main weapon, you'll also be able to pick up additional weapons, such as a missile launcher, a flamethrower, or even a spread weapon, which will give you more firepower. Now, instead of having an ammo count for each weapon, you'll have a meter, and the meter can actually be replenished by picking up some certain power-ups, which will allow it to last longer. Some, some of the special weapons will also have a charge attack, which will unleash a more powerful version of that attack. A feature that was added to this game is the ability to ride in vehicles. The vehicles in this game are similar to Metal Slug. You can use them to run over enemies, knock down obstacles, and blow up larger vehicles. You have different types of vehicles with their own unique attack pattern, and you can charge them to unleash a more powerful attack. Like Metal Slug, it'll protect your character from attack, but the vehicles themselves can take only so many hits before you get the signal to escape before it explodes and you get damaged. Alright, so now let's get into the boss battles of this game. The boss battles in this game mostly consist of very large vehicles, and before the start of each battle, you'll be shown targets where you have to hit the boss. Now, the boss battles in this game, compared to the original Shark Troopers, are far, far more intense. And the one thing that really stands out is the bullets that you have to dodge. Uh, this yeah, is a bullet hell type battle. These are bullet hell type battles in which you have to evade large swarms of bullets. Now, the bosses in this game, like any other, they have specific attack patterns that you have to follow, so you have to really pay, co pay close attention. Uh, biggest advice is jump a lot. Make, make plenty of use of the jump that's going to help you out. Now, the bosses have different uh, types of attack patterns based on how much damage you've done to the boss, so, uh, so the boss uh, attack patterns change throughout the battle. Uh, one drawback I would have to say with the boss battles is that they can be very long. Uh, because the bosses are so intense, or they're so large in this game, and it consists of so many different targets, they take a very long time for them to be destroyed completely. So after the first stage, you have a choice between two different paths that you could take to, in order to get to the final stages in this game. So you have that feature retained from the first Shock Troopers. Uh, 
what I like about this game are the graphics. I actually do like the pre-rendered graphics in this game compared to the sprite characters from the first game, although they, that, that game looked very good as well. Uh, I also like the fact there's a lot more animation in the characters in this game, and also the fact there's a lot more action going on on screen compared to the first game. And because of that, the battles are a lot more intense. Uh, you'll fight, you'll end up fighting more enemies, and also the increased firepower makes it really challenging to dodge. Uh, the the ability to use vehicles. I like the fact that they mix in some Metal Slug in this game, so that's another big positive. Although there are fewer characters in this game compared to the first one, I still like the fact that each character has a unique feel, and the fact that you know that every character has different attributes, so it's up to you to decide what character suits you best. Uh, drawbacks, like I said, the biggest drawback in this game is the slowdown. Uh, it 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 does get very annoying at times, but like I said as well, it does help you out in certain areas of the game. Uh, another thing is that while you do have the branching paths in this game like the first one, there aren't as many paths to choose from and also there are not ne nearly as many stages. So while th I, there is replay value in this game, I still find that the first Shock Troopers has more replay value. But all in all, I still think this is a really good game. It's still very fun to play by yourself or two players. If you don't have a Neo Geo, you can get this for the Wii Virtual Console, so I strongly recommend this game. I'm going to give this game 4 out of 5 stars, so I hope you enjoy. Thank you.